today, I'd like to take a couple minutes to talk about the operation of a plasma cutter. A plasma cutter is a remarkable device that can cut metal using air and electricity. The air has to be clean and dry. Unfortunately, your average home air compressor does not provide dry air. Here's the reason why. All air contains a certain amount of water vapor. The volume of water held by the air varies with the temperature and pressure. The higher the temperature, the more water air is able to hold. The simple fact of compressing air makes it very hot, which means that air can store more water within it. To help remove this water before running it through your plasma cutter, you can run the compressed air through desiccant crystals like these. The problem is the crystals need maintenance or to be replaced periodically. To lengthen the time in between this required maintenance, let me show you how I remove water from the lines before the crystals are involved. The hot compressed air can be cooled down by running the air through a lot of pipe. Let's take a look. The air exits the compressor and runs along this hose. It then slams into this T-fitting. The water vapor in the air will hit that steel fitting and some of it will be knocked out of the air. Additionally, the turbulent airflow at this fitting will cause low pressure spots. And this also will cause more water to be knocked out of the air. Gravity grabs this water and pulls it down this hose. At the end of the hose, there's a nozzle for easy elimination of the excess water. I have found it's much better instead of shooting the water onto your garage floor, drill a small hole into a small bucket and attach a rag to the top. The compressed air will pass through the rag and the water will stay in the bucket. This is especially important when you're draining the rusty water that's in the tank. That stuff can make quite a mess. However, since you're shooting about 100 psi into this bucket, make sure you hang on to it. Okay, back to our airflow. The air continues to cool as it travels along this hose, and at the bottom of each of these runs, I place the valve to drain any water off. By the time the air finishes traveling the length of all this pipe, it is cooled down to room temperature. At this point, I run it into one last water separator. To tell the truth, I've never actually seen this thing pull any water out of the air. So, either my design up to this point has done a really good job, or this water separator is a piece of junk. I don't really know which one's true. I do, however, like the convenient fact that it's got a knob where I can adjust the output pressure, as well as a gauge that tells me what that pressure is. This way I don't have to adjust it at my air compressor, which is at a remote location. Speaking of remote locations, this is a good place to put a switch to control power going to your air compressor. Well, that's about it. However, before I finish up, I'd like to share with you a drawback that this system actually has. Routing the air through all the stuff I just showed you can significantly reduce the volume of air coming out of the end of your nozzle. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Here you can see when I expel air through my nozzle, the volume of air moving through the hose is too slow to keep the pressure up. The air volume requirements for my plasma cutter are low enough that it's not affected by this problem. But if you're going to run other things like air tools that require a lot of airflow, you'll want to bypass all this stuff I just showed you. Personally, I just took an air hose directly up to the air compressor. Well, I hope this video is going to help you extend the life of your very expensive plasma cutter consumables. And thanks for watching.